and this is called magnifying power. Magnifying power. This means how much the telescope can magnify or enlarge the image, how big it can make it. Usually with telescopes, we want them to enlarge the image, but not too much. Uh, we, it's not like a microscope. A microscope, you want big magnification power for microscope because you're trying to put a, an ant in there or a leaf in there. You're trying to tell the cell structure of the leaf. So you want microscopes 10,000 magnification power, 20,000 magnification power. Telescope, you don't want to look and then magnify it that big. First of all, telescopes, it's going to be very hard for them ma to magnify it that big anyway. Plus, if you magnify it that big, it's not going to be clear. The image is not going to be clear. So typically, mag uh, magnification powers of telescope may be 20, 30, 40, 50 but maybe not much more, much, much more than that. So the magnification power of a telescope is the focal length of the primary lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. You divide the two focal lengths and you get, that gives you the magnification power. FL stands for focal length and is a measure of how curved the mirror or lens surfaces are. So it's, it's a feature of the curvature of the lens or the curvature of the mirror. Okay. So, for example, in this one, this one is a. We're going to be learning about the difference between reflecting and refracting lenses later on. Uh, this one is a reflecting telescope. It has no lens here, but inside of it, back there, there's going to be a mirror. Okay. So, depending on the curvature of that mirror, it has a certain focal length. So you divide the focal length of that mirror by the focal length of the lens that you're using. And this is the eyepiece, OK? For example, the focal length of this eyepiece is 26 millimeters. It tells you on there, OK? So every eyepiece that you buy, this one, the focal length is 16.8 millimeters. This one, the focal length was 26 millimeters. So ba based on this equation, The smaller the focal length of the eyepiece, the smaller this number, the more it will magnify. So if I take these two eyepieces, this is 16 millimeter focal length, 26 millimeter. This magnifies more, the smaller focal length. You see? The smaller this is and the bigger that is, more magnification. The same thing happens when you buy the, uh, the regular cameras. You buy different pieces to it, you know, depending on how much you want to magnify. And then they come with different eyepieces. This one is another one. This one is uh, seven millimeters, okay, focal length. So those are all the accessories that you buy. You know, when you buy a telescope or when you buy a camera, you can buy all those accessories. Okay, I'll put this back on here. So example, if the primary lens has a focal length of 100 centimeters and the eyepiece has a focal length of 5 centimeters, then the magnification power of this lens is simply just divide them. 100 over 5, 20. That means it can magnify the image 20 times, 20 fold. <coughs> So this, that picture you're seeing is showing, I believe this is a magnification power of roughly four. So if this is what you would uh, see with your naked eye, let's say, and then you're seeing through the telescope, it's four times. You see here, if I put this here once, twice, three times, four times. See, that's a magnification power of four. It means this fits into there four times. See, so if you did five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine, 10, 20, imagine what you would see. You would see it, you would be able to see a lot more stuff. But then if you get too much, like 100 or something, it might blow it up a lot, but then it might get very grainy, you know? So you, there's a limit. 
the, usually the general rule is the bigger the aperture of the telescope, the more you can go up without looking grainy, you know. So if I get a really big one, I can have a higher magnification maximum I can go up to. That's why those are very expensive, the bigger apertures, okay. Usually the price of the telescope will rely mainly on that aperture. It's very important. <coughs> So the magnification power is not as important as the collecting or resolving power. Always look for the aperture as the most important quality of the telescope. Because aperture will determine resolving power. It will re determine collecting power. It will also indirectly determine the maximum magnification power you can have. So very, very important. The other secondary things you can look for are the brand name and all of that other stuff whether it's a Newtonian telescope or a Cassegrain telescope, and I'll explain that later what I mean by that. 